Namaste World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Mm. Let's watch Windfall of Grace, a mm. documentary about named Kaoli Baba. Mm. It was a request by World Yogis F and Shash Rao. And as you might notice, my voice is, a ve is very chill. Mm. It's because we just watched it and redo mm. our intro because we found out that today, mm. on the 11th of September in 1973, uh, he passed away and mm. we thought it is an auspicious day mm -hmm. um, to publish this video. Um, so we're just going to do a condensed shorter version because it's a really long documentary. So the full length watch along where you sync up with the timestamp will be in our members section. So thank you so much. And if you like it as much as we do, please hit that like button. And of course, subscribe um, as a way to show our appreciation and devotion to these holy saints mm. and these divine beings. This film is a humble tribute to the great Baba Nim Karole Maharaj, who is a marvelous metaphor of the exalted beings who have roamed this land of Bharat for millennia. Ooh, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> 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 Magical. He had a number of names during his life, you know, from his birth name, Lakshmi Narayan Sharma. So when people say I met him at this stage, and they, they could have met him with a different name. Since Lakshman Das, probably Baba Lakshman Das was given to him at Neem Karodi itself. At Neem Karodi? Oh, it's a place? Maharaj Ji, look at संत कहें या अवतार कहें उनको वो तो मनुष्य के बीच में एक लीला करने आए थे मैं तो उनको यही समझती हूँ कि उनका कोई रूप नहीं था जहाँ भी जाते थे अपना रूप भी बदल लेते थे रूप बदल लेने का मतलब ये है कि कहीं भी गए हैं कोई कश में है उपहार शक्ति थी हनुमान जी के अवतार में बताते थे लोग कोई कोई जैसी दृष्टि वैसी श्री जैसी दृष्टि वैसी श्री Hmm. The thing is, Neem Karoli Baba is a Hanuman avatar. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what else is there to say? <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Hanumanji. Hmm. Oh, it smokes. That is quite the statement. Hmm. Hanumanji is a little bit of a हनुमान जी ये आएंगे महाराज के शरीर में ही आएंगे वो महाराज के साक्षात वो हनुमान जी थे इसमें कोई शक नहीं महाराज जी स्वयं भगवान श्री राम और श्री कृष्ण या हनुमान जी के प्रति भेज कर हनुमान जी के साथ सान्निध्य करा के वो दास भावना को सिद्ध करना चाहते हैं दास से भाव सर्विस एंड डिवोशन People think that you need to see your guru in a physical body, but that's only because we think we are physical bodies. Oh. They don't think that. They're not limited by a physical. They're not even identified with the physical body. Yeah. People they used to say about Maharaji that he had no consciousness of his body whatsoever. Where it went, what it did, what it said, he was completely merged in Ram, oh. and everything that happened happened through him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there was no doer. Yeah. Oh, when people would come to the temple oh. and say, ask for something, and say, go ask Hanuman. And what does Hanuman say? Hanuman says, ask Ram. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I was in Massachusetts uh, hitchhiking one day and I got picked up by a couple in a van. I got into the back seat and as soon as I got in, I noticed they had this little photo of an old man in a blanket. <laughs> it was only about two inches square mm -hmm. and I couldn't stop looking at it. Yeah. Uh, and after, uh, I don't know, several minutes or maybe 10 minutes of looking at it, I began to feel emotion. Like tears, and I was like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, eventually, I actually started sobbing. Oh, wow. And the woman turned to me and she says, Oh, what's wrong, honey? And I said, I don't know, who is that a picture of? And she said, Oh, that's our guru, Neem Karoli Baba. When she said Neem Karoli Baba, it was like, <sighs> <laughs> I felt it deep in my being, and lights went off, and the tears flowed nonstop. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's so beautiful. Neem Karoli Baba, who is popularly called Maharaji, also was hey, one of the kind of <laughs> They come for various purposes. They don't come to give you a lesson and teach you in a systematic way, but in their presence, automatically, you your soul begins to vibrate in a different uh, frequency. That's their function. You can't really say they are my gurus, but they don't make disciples, actually. Siddhi Sai Baba never made disciples either. But there are one category above people who say we are making disciples. They're the makers of the disciple makers. <laughs> or are you crying already? <laughs> this is, I mean, honestly, like he wow. Was giving <laughs> us the tools and setting us free to find our own way a bit. Mm. But he was always the uh, whole star for everyone oh. mm. and the guide. So he used to come for four or five days or six days mm. at the most visit house of the devotee from one place and every devotee wanted him to be in his house and have full dinner or food <laughs> and he used to visit each and every house every day and take full meal wherever from he was every to. house wow. at one time i remember more than 20 meals that's a, that's a miracle too I never heard that. I only we only ever hear the opposite, right? That they don't eat, mm. but not that they actually eat, eat, eat. Yeah. It just doesn't affect them. Eating everything. Yeah. Mm. It's beautiful. I really remember one day he was um, sitting on the ground, and he was surrounded by some Indian ladies, and he looked so small and so childlike to me <laughs> at the moment <laughs> that I went over and I kissed the top of his head. <laughs> And I guess that's a big no-no or something because all the Indian ladies were like, oh, what's that, you know? And, and, of course, any time he could elicit that kind of reaction from anybody, he loved it. <laughs> so the next time he had a group of ladies around it, he looked at me and he went. <laughs> it's a bold move. Yeah, he probably loves that. Yeah, that's it's courage. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Puja was going on. And people had started coming, these village people, they were poor people for Prasad. And my two of my friends were here. Maharaji asked me, oh, people have started coming, why they are not being given Prasad? So I asked my friend, go and ask. Then other person came and said, Maharaji, Havan is going on, and the Prasad will be first offered to, for Puja and God, then he will, Maharaji was lying on the court, then he became so furious, he got up. <laughs> Why this swaha swaha? People are dying of hunger and you people have doing this swaha swaha. <laughs> Bring food, feed them. Oh. This is the greatest puja. Oh. Oh, nice. Chando. He made it. Wow. 
So this is the one he made? Yeah. We have to go there. Wow. Maharaji ne grasta jivan bhi adars grasta jivan betit kiya. बच्चों को किसी तरह का अभाव महसूस नहीं होनी है खाने पीने का मिष्ठान का घर में कोई कमी नहीं रहती थी जब भी आते थे तो और भी बच्चे मिलते थे रास्ते में उनको भी बांटते हुए आते थे वो कहते रहते थे कि मेरा एक बच्चे दो बच्चे या तीन बच्चे नहीं हैं मेरे तो सारा विश्व समुदाय के बच्चे हैं वो सब मेरे ही बच्चे हैं ऐसे विशाल हृदय बहुत कमी होते हैं जब महाराज जी अकबरपुर आते थे पता लगता था महाराज जी आ गए हम बड़े खुश होते थे और हम अपने बगीचे में जाते थे तो महाराज जी को एक पेड़ के नीचे बैठा हुआ देखते थे तो जब होते तो हम बहुत प्रसन्न होते हैं एक बच्चा जिस प्रकार अपने पिता से मिलकर खुश होता है उसी प्रकार खुशी होती तो जब हम पहुंचते थे तो वो कि हम तुमसे मिल लिए अब हम जा रहे हैं वो ऐसा बोलते थे तो हम रोने लगते थे लेकिन हमारा रोना उनको सहन नहीं था और वो हमारे साथ साथ हमारी उंगली पकड़े हुए घर आ जाए वो एक साधारण हमारे बाबा जैसे रहते थे और ये बहुत बड़ा कारण रहा कि डेथ तक भी हम समझ नहीं पाए कि ये कितने विख्यात संत हैं या हनुमान जी के अंदर विराजमान हैं ये जो बोलते हैं वो सब सही होता है ये हमें कुछ एहसास ही नहीं होने देते थे घर में हाँ वो एक किस्सा जरूर बताती थी कि जब ये तपस्या से लौट के आए थे तो गांव में आए गांव में आए मिले इनसे तो इनसे बहुत सुनाई इनको खूब डाटा तो बोलते हैं कि तू तो ऐसी है कि घर का जो भी लोग ना आम गांव का सिद्ध है तेरे लिए तो मेरी के आदमी की कोई कोई वैल्यू नहीं और बाहर कोई संत होगा उसकी पूजा करोगे तो ये वेशभूषा कैसी बना रखी है उस समय तो बड़े बड़े बात है कैसी वेशभूषा बना रखी है क्या सीख के आया हमारी दादी ने पूछा तो ला तुम जल्दी ला सरसों बुलवाई सरसों अपने हाथ में ले ली और मुँह में डाल ली दो तीन चम्मच और चबाने लगे उसको चबा के एक दो मिनट चबाई होगी फिर उबल के हाथ पे ले आए तो उसमें से दो दो अंकुरित हो गए थे दो दो पत्ते निकल आए थे दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट इंसिडेंट क्योंकि है सोन तो माई ग्रैंड मदर वो खुद ही बताती थी उनके अंदर इतनी शक्ति आ गई थी कि अब आप देखो जर्मिनेशन हो गया सीट्स का रामदास singing Sri Ram Jai Ram to Maharaji for a while in the big room at Dadi's house. And I noticed these two young men came in with this very old lady and they sat in the back of the room. As soon as they came in, Maharaji got up and went into his bedroom and he called those people in. And the lady just looked at him and said, Baba, how could this be? How could you be here? And Maharaji's going, Jai! Shut up! Don't talk! <laughs> her, she, but she couldn't. She said, Baba, how could this be? How could you be here? How, how could this be, Baba? How? And he said, Ma, shut up! She wouldn't stop. And finally said, Ma, I died and I was reborn in the hills now. Be quiet. So Dada, who was like the CID for Maharaji's stories, when they left, and he ran, runs around the back way, and he grabs him and says, What's the story here? And she said, I used to sit in his lap when I was eight years old. I, he was my grandfather's guru. He looks exactly the same, except I don't remember the blanket. 
And this was how many years ago? She was eight. She had to be 80 if she was a day. He looked exactly the same. Hmm. And it was the same name. Same name. That's also crazy. Huh? Wow. We asked him, how do you find God? He said, you know, serve people. I said, what? <laughs> he said, well, how do you wish for his kundalini, you know, in the <laughs> Feed people. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Selfless service. Aww. Many, many, many of us met Ramdas. He had met Maharaji in India and then came mm, back and for is. several years, two and a half years or so, he went around and talked of his experience. And, in, and we all had a definitive feeling of connection, not only to him, but where he came from yeah. and who that being was, Nimkarali. He had talked about his guru without naming him, and we knew, and he would say, everything that I have comes from him. Mm -hmm. So then it was like, then I want that. <laughs> and I did, I was very, very single-pointed, as many of us were. Even though he was told not to say anything about Maharaji, he did. <laughs> Except he never said the name, nor did he say where he was. <laughs> Clearly when I met Ramdas, he was the conduit for mm -hmm. Maharaji. Oh. And um, it was hard to know that at the time because it seemed like this uh, very sharp mm -hmm. Western, him? you know, former psychologist, psychologist. and all of that. Mm. I was expecting to, uh, you know, hear the uh, Harvard professor and uh, he showed up, uh, you know, wearing uh, a white, like, Ulfi <laughs> and uh, barefoot <laughs> in uh, what was still the winter time <laughs> in uh, U.S. So he looked like a yogi. <laughs> So when these people, Westerners, they used to sing bhajan smart before Maharaji. Mm. Maharaji used to be in tears sometimes oh. because he knew and understood their hearts. They were so pure. Mm. Then sometime, personally, I have seen that he used to call some Indian devotees who were the, who had that ego. No, they are the superior. Okay, sit down. <laughs> then they, he would ask these Westerners to sing, mm. and they would sing this arti or bhajans, Sri Ram Jai Ram or Hanuman Chalisa. Then says, look at them, how pure they are. Hmm. It is not in the, the sanskaras of the Westerners to sing Hanuman Chalisa or like that. But even then, they, when they sing, they sing it right from their heart. Hmm. Maharaj used to sit in the office. They used to sit Gopala, Gopala, Sri Ram, Jai Ram and Hanuman Chalisa. Millions and millions times of... <laughs> I was not one of these people to push up to the front. I said, if the guru has something to say to me, he will say it, you know. <laughs> so I didn't wave my hand or, or touch his feet, you know. But um, I was sitting in the back and I thought, I've been here a month. He doesn't know that I'm here. <laughs> At that point, a banana dropped out of the sky. <laughs> and, the back, and nobody was uh, throwing fruit around, you know. It just suddenly dropped here. I knew it was from our right. <laughs> I love it. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> it's like I see you in the back. Maharaji says uh, taking LSD is like uh, window shopping. You can look in the window, but you can't buy. You know. <laughs> so it showed me what's there. You have to achieve on your own. Hmm. He used to say, "The yogi medicine." What's he called? The yogi medicine. <laughs> brings you into the room with Christ. Oh, oh wow. But you can't stay. Hmm. The only way to stay is love. The only wow. way to stay is love. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What I remember is there were lots of people. Hmm. Lots of people. And I went and sat at the back. I was a very young man. Hmm. And... Maheshwarnath Babaji, my Shriam. guru, yeah. told me, Babaji is there, go and see. Hmm. Maheshwarnath Babaji was convinced that Maharaji had some connection with oh, wow. Sri Guru Babaji. So I went there. There was a big crowd. So he was sitting, you know, like normal 
उसको बुलाओ मुझे बुला हाँ आपको बुला यहाँ बैठो बैठो ही And he said, "Cow." Hmm. I remember this story. <laughs> it was him. I was looking book. at it, yeah. and he didn't know his cook. <laughs> should we eat? Should we? Then again, he said, "Cow." So quickly, I ate it. <laughs> I don't know how I kind of ate up. And then he said, "Abhi jao." Hmm. I remember the story. When he said, "Abhi jao," there was no way waiting. But sitting there and talking to him, I knew that there was something going on between him, and hmm. I can't put it into words. I can't define it for you. Oh. Hmm. Wow. You cannot have a mass prescription. Yeah, no. That is the beauty of the whole mm-hmm. ancient Hindu culture. There is no particular system meant for everybody. Mm-hmm. He told him that Guru was Jesus. Oh. Nice. Well, I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> I didn't come to India to hear I should be a Christian. You know? <laughs> Totally. <laughs> he came to me the next day on the street in Nainital, and he looked like somebody else. Hmm. And he said, "What are you doing in India? You have Jesus Christ." I didn't realize that was him at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Because he would say Hanuman and Christ are one, yeah. and now so many Westerners, especially Nimkaroli Baba devotees, know Hanuman Chalisa in the West. It's extraordinary. <laughs> It is sub ek hi. It's the same. Mm. He would send us encouraging letters when I was at WHO. And Ravi Khanna would write on the outside, "Maharaj, to open this quickly. This is this is the advice you need today." So I opened it up, and and it was all in Hindi, of course. And it said, "Ram, ram, 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 The real essence of Ram, which is Shuddha Brahm, hmm. pure formless divinity. Hmm. Maharaj ka jahan chintan hai, Maharaj ka jahan prem hai, maha Maharaj. Maharaj ka jahan prasad hai, wahi Maharaj. Wahi par divya swaroop unka vidyaman ho gaya. Na ham basami vai kunthe, main vai kunth mein nivas nahi karta hu. Na ham basami vai kunthe, yogi naam hridaye na vai. Yogiyon ke hriday mein bhi nishchit मैं नहीं रहता हूँ मधु भक्ता यत्र गायंती मेरे भक्त जहाँ कीर्तन करते हैं तत्र तिष्ठा में नारद ये नारद में वहीं पर उपस्थित हो जाऊँ 
you know, once I take your hand, I never let go, even when you let go of mine. You know, it's true. Well, we don't always recognize him. Yeah. And so for us, for devotees, his devotees, we're okay when we remember him or we forget. Why not? It's that simple. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. That was one of the best spiritual documentaries I've seen. Fantastic. Yeah, job putting that together. That was amazing. Interviewing all the devotees and so many. So so many. So many, so many from the West too. Yeah. Sri M in there and Beautiful. recounting his experience. Yeah, which was in him. his book. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. So he touched the lives of so many people and so unique in a way yeah. too, saying he wasn't a regular saint. He wasn't really telling the people, you know, what to do, do this, mm. do that. He was just present with them and just being there and, you know, showing them, you know, how to love, how to be love and love be one love. another. Now I know where Ram Das is coming from. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could totally resonate with, yeah, just Ram Das's presence and what he's there to teach because we also we need to know as spiritual seekers that it's so important to you know be loving work on the heart right open the heart um yeah crack it open like Sri M said right <laughs> you know so I think that's uh yeah that's a major you know culmination so instead of destroying the ego entirely and transcending it you know, we first have to turn this ego into a loving, you know, mm. being. Mm. And in that sense, you know, we're able to, you know, perform action and be of service. And yeah, as one teaching in there was, you know, people are like, what can we do, you know? Well, what can we do to attain the, the highest and enlightenment and all this? And he's like, he's like, feed the people, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, serve the people. What right? are you doing? Making offerings first to yeah, the statues yeah. and God, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And he's like, there's starving people out there. Go feed them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a, yeah, that's a great teaching, a great lesson yeah. to know that we need to be of service. And yeah, first we need to you know, bring in some spiritual wisdom, some knowledge, and however mm. path that we're on, yeah, follow it. You know, get a feeling for what spirituality is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, the oneness, that we're all divine creations, that we're all part of, you know, one manifestation, and then we feel into that, and then we be, you know, one family, right? Yeah. And share and love and care about one another, be compassionate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then just the music in this was like, whew. the whole thing was like a, a, a trip. Tri a curtain. A trip. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But yeah, so and he had a big connection with Vrindavan as well, right? Mm. So that's where he left the body. So amazing. They probably have some shrines and there's probably temples all over India. Hmm. We'll have to put it on the list. But now it's so it's so neat, you know, getting because we knew of Krishna Das and Ram Das, and now, you know, getting a taste and yeah, a documentary of their their guru, right? And you can see the devotion, right? You know, he's everything to them, and that's what it is—true mm -hmm. true guru devotion, right? Yeah. So that's what it's supposed to be yeah. so actually, I amazing i love the reminder of how um pictures you know mm. uh transmit oh yeah you know and in the end like literally everything mm. you know everything has its own vibration mm -hmm. totally you know every book and you know every picture it's mm -hmm. So what kind of pictures do you have in your room? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if everything emits something, and in the end everything is God, yeah. But, you know, on the conventional level, mm -hmm. there might be different... Uh, yeah, the form of these beings. Play. Yeah, it does transmit a vibration. You can see it just... So I was really watching, you know, the images and the footage 
of him. And it's like, you know, even like pictures where he's kind of looking down and you can only see his head or whatever. <laughs> it's still giving off some energy. And I feel, you know, you feel that radiance, right? That grace and then that power of just, yeah. okay, he was definitely realized being also the so then i didn't really understand that too much but I, anything is possible but the incarnation so another manifestation of hanuman i see it as like you know hanuman's you know essence and power and potency you know mm -hmm. being transmitted through him as a teaching of okay what is you know devotion supposed to look like mm -hmm. and then that's why so when he was getting he said the greatest thing and what he wanted the most was for his devotees to do these you know, bhajans and kirtans and just these devotional songs and that made him the happiest. And really it was also skillful means to help open their hearts by saying that <laughs> this is what I like the most, but yeah, yeah. So, but he was getting them to do it not for his benefit because mm -hmm. he liked to listen to it, but for their benefit because it would he knew yeah. that it would help open their hearts, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah, and also earlier in the documentary when they were saying that he's an incarnation of Hanuman, because I also know that Hanuman is one of the deities that's present. They mentioned it later in the documentary that he's present in all four mm -hmm. yugs. Mm -hmm. So he's here right now, right? And then he's hidden. And then he was also like in the Bhagavad Gita during the Mahabharat. Oh, oh right. Oh, oh, oh. So he's he's everywhere and he's he hasn't oh, left yeah. in this realm. So then so then tying that into Christ, we're saying Hanuman mm. is Christ. And you can see that, like just the courage of Jesus, you know, to do what he did. You know, he mm. must have had some power from somewhere. You know, because even Jesus got wrathful at some point, like in the, temp in the temple. Oh, yeah, where he's flipping over all the tables because the... The Jews. I don't know. I don't know many Jesus stories. Yeah, they well they set up a market in the temple to sell stuff, right? Uh -huh. And he flipped over all the tables and he says, "This is a place of worship, not for doing, oh, doing business." Jesus flipped over tables. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I want. Yeah. I want to see a wrathful Jesus picture. Oh yeah, Ooh. maybe I'll have to look for one. But anyway, so the wrathfulness, so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so in this documentary, what I really love, the one part where he did get wrathful with, you know, the one guy was really investigating, you know, why is this devotee here and you can't even chant the Bhagavad Gita mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And it just shows that, you know, and and uh, Neem Kor Karolai Baba got really mm -hmm. upset there and then displayed the wrathfulness mm -hmm. because it, I think he wanted to cut through this, you know, this prideful vanity that, you know, even spiritual, so-called spiritual people, we want to judge everything, right? Mm -hmm. So here's somebody in the guru's presence, obviously a, mm -hmm. a devotee and accepted by the guru, yet somebody's questioning <laughs> him, like, like, you, like we know better <laughs> than the guru, right? So, yeah. and then gave that lesson that, you know, when the guy ended up apologizing to the devotee, yeah, it's wonderful, right? So we got to let go of our judgments because we don't know. So thank you all so much for joining us for this wonderful, wonderful documentary. We absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, we truly feel the grace and the blessings of this this divine being. And we see how he has so many wonderful and advanced in the ways of love, mm -hmm. right? His devotees, you could just feel that they are being love, mm -hmm. sharing it and being courageous enough in this world to, you know, express that. I absolutely loved it. So, uh, yeah, it's the most important thing. We can raise ourselves to the level of love. Exactly. And, and raising the world to the level of love. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. And a very special thank you to our world yogis, F mm. and Shash Rao. Mm. Thank you. I love you. Mm. Peace. Thank you.